शी सो ऑलवेज से सुनो सबकी पण करो मन की शांत यू वंस यू विजिट हर मन एंड यू सी हाउ आई थिंक यू नीड टू हैव अ लॉट ऑफ सेल्फ अवेयरनेस द बिगेस्ट चैलेंज इज दैट पीपल एक्चुअली आर सेल्फ डाउटिंग सो आई हैड द ऑपर्चुनिटी टू प्रैक्टिस four times every week on school time the, uh, the motto is not to be the first indian or the best indian we do 70% of my sessions for preparing on my strength bushan keep yes. the sports champ magazine going because you inspire all of us in school that when i played first time for india it was at the age of 20 the other thing that's also helped me greatly is like the yoga i don't practice. think any sportsman can achieve anything without family support hard work plus courage is equal to champion try to work something on the brand you have strong strong uh, grassroots grassroots training system i think that will really help uh, our generation that you know if i can walk around if i can run around like a normal person i might as well try it like a normal you person know, the experiences that is being shared on this platform is i think is priceless I, you know hats off to you for uh, really encouraging uh, sports in in the youngsters it's so amazing uh, that mr bhushan you have taken up upon your selling so this platforms gives every educators a uh, a boost uh, to think and hello everyone welcome to sport champ live talk show our live journey of an athlete i'm bhushan thakur founder and editor in chief of sport champ a sports education magazine and your host for today's talk show we are happy to start a exclusive series on indian table tennis heroes where i'll be having the privilege and honor to interact with indian table tennis heroes and legends who have made us all proud in national and international arena and we are hopeful that this exclusive series will guide and inspire many young and upcoming champions of india today we have a very special guest with us a legend in the field of table tennis neeti roy sha former international table tennis player and arjun awardi she has won sub junior national championship in 1978 and junior national championship in 1980 and won senior national championship title 3 times in 1988 1990 and 1992 and was runners up in 1991 she is the recipient of the shiv chhatrapati award and arjun award represented india in the olympic games at seoul and barcelona and won bronze medal in asian junior championship and commonwealth championship Saf Games gold medalist in Calcutta and Islamabad in singles doubles and team events represented India in the world championship asian championship commonwealth championship asian games asia cup us open and many more welcome to the show uh, neeti ma'am and thank, thank you for you so accepting much. my invitation yeah thank you for having me on the show thank you so much ma'am uh, we start with uh, a challenge which is called like yours if you have to define yourself in three words what will that be uh well uh, i would like to say that i am a very uh, introverted person and that is how i would like to define myself as an introvert okay. yeah okay ma'am what do you think about this sport champ platform and this exclusive series which we have started on indian table tennis heroes i think you have done a wonderful job and you are doing a wonderful job uh, to uh, promote table tennis and uh, in fact i was shocked when you called me and uh, you asked me to come on the show so i think it's good that uh, you know you're uh, mixing the old players with the new players and okay. um, i think uh, that and uh, if a lot of table tennis players watch this i think it will uh, help them in future correct ma'am ma'am tell us about your childhood how did you get into table tennis uh i chanced upon table tennis uh when i changed schools when i was in the fifth standard uh okay. there were several table tennis tables in my new school and uh, most of the students used to play uh as many games as they could uh during the short break and the long break uh so it so happened that once there was an uh, interclass tournament so i thought okay you know let me also take part because uh, soon i too got uh, attracted uh, towards the game and uh, even i started playing with these other kids uh during the short break and long break 
so when they had this interclass tournament i too you know gave my name and uh, my new school was a coed school so i won the title beating a boy in the semis and the finals and uh, actually that motivated me into playing the game more seriously and these two uh, players whom i had beaten in the semis and finals uh, they were playing uh, they were representing the school uh, for the uh, inter school tournaments so they were uh, supposed to be you know champions so okay. <clears throat> then my sports teacher in school told uh, my dad that you know she has a lot of potential and uh, talent so why not uh, you know make her join a gym or somewhere you know where she can pursue uh, table tennis more seriously so that is how it all started okay which which city it was like uh, where where you mumbai. started mumbai. mumbai okay mumbai and my okay. new school was st peter school uh, which was in okay. masgaon okay ma'am what was your parent role in making you a champion like how they used to support you mm, see actually uh, i come from a sports loving family so my father was a football player who had played for the country and uh, he was the main force behind motivating me into starting to play table tennis so he was a man of very modest means and uh, he always used to tell me that the only wealth i can give you is uh, you know sending you to school educating you and uh, exposing you to playing sports so that is all and uh, he used to uh, accompany me uh, for tournaments uh, as a junior and a sub junior and uh, uh, he used to come with me in mumbai out of mumbai uh, for the tournaments and uh, since he was a player himself he used to always advise me on the physical and mental aspects uh, of sports so definitely he is uh, he was the most in, uh, important influence in my career he was someone i could always uh, bank on and uh, he taught me the importance of discipline and hard work okay and uh, who was your mentor or coach like how did your coach and he helped you to achieve your goals um uh, my class narsapur uh okay. he was already an established state level uh, player uh, when i started playing at the matunga gym in mumbai okay he somehow uh, spotted me you know uh, playing with the other beginners and uh, he saw my uh, enthusiasm and passion to learn more about the game and uh, so slowly then he started uh, you know uh, talking to me about the uh, technical aspects of the game you know how to hold the racket you know your footwork your stance how to bend and stuff like that so he was the one who taught me four hand counter back hand counter basic footwork and uh, top spin uh, laying the basic foundation to my game uh, subsequently my father uh, requested him to play with me uh, every day after his practice session uh, was over for about half an hour or so you know kind of feed me the ball so that i get you know my strokes uh, properly and uh, which he did but then uh, sadly after a year he moved uh, to bangalore to pursue his uh, engineering degree and then he quit playing so after that i did not have any coach uh, till i got selected uh, to attend the national coaching camps at patiala and bangalore okay and uh, during your training schedule uh, uh, what used to be your uh, uh, training schedule in your training days and specifically for your uh, what you used to do for mental training okay 
so basically as a kid i used to get up at uh, 5:30 in the morning and okay. uh, my morning session was devoted uh, to exercise physical exercise uh, because my dad emphasized the importance of uh, physical fitness and uh, actually my dad was the principal of a mentally retarded school in mumbai okay. and we were living uh, within the premises so and that school had a huge playground so like you know kind of morning at 5:30 in the morning i i had the whole uh, playground to myself and my trainer was my dad so the mornings used to be either running or skipping or you know short sprints or uh, you know shadow practice then sometimes it used to be little strength training with light weights and uh, stretching was something i used to do a lot so uh, and uh, you know during the short sprints and the side running and shadow practice my dad used to time me so he would say that okay you're running in so much uh, time so now you should be faster try to raise your level try to raise your level so <clears throat> that uh, would last for about one one and a half hours in the morning after that i would rush to school and get back home by around 3:45 and uh, my evenings were devoted to playing table tennis at the matunga gym for about 2 to 1 and a half hours so <clears throat> my ultimate goal before starting any training was that i should practice seriously and stress myself in practice as i would be later stressed in a tournament Correct. so i would always practice with a purpose knowing exactly which shots i wanted to work on okay and uh, as far as uh, mental training is concerned uh, i did not have any formal coach uh, or mentor i used to practice uh, visualization and uh, i learn some breathing and uh, uh, relaxation exercises so i basically worked on my own mental fitness so i had to innovate i had to learn my own techniques and i've crafted my own journey so super this is how it is uh ma'am what uh, used to be or like what you say the ultimate goal before starting your training but any pre planning of sequences or targets before training or monitoring the same analyzing the same before the session or after the session which will guide current players uh see uh, the thing is uh, basically when i used to play tournaments and maybe lose a match so i would try to analyze why i lost how i lost what were my weak weak points and i would try to work on that so whenever i used to uh, practice i used to practice very seriously with intensity and with utter seriousness you know nowadays i i see you know uh, players like half the time they're on their phone then they're chatting so you should have that uh, focus i feel you know that single minded focus that you should okay. take it as if you're playing a match a tournament only then when you are actually playing a tournament you won't uh, you know choke or freeze you know okay. you will be uh, able to play your game so i used to always analyze and another thing what i used to try to do is that uh, when i used to practice i always had a target in mind so i have uh, the ball you know at a particular place uh, with a certain amount of either spin or speed okay so how often i was able to do it how often i was able to reach my target that is uh, how i uh, gauged how much i improved or benefited from that uh, practice session so basically i used to take that very seriously no fooling no talking nothing <laughs> ma'am what was your uh, initial your initial struggles on your journey of becoming a champion and what once 
was one special thing in you which you keeps you ahead uh, than others see uh, bushan actually when i started playing table tennis uh, i had absolutely no idea why i was playing table tennis <laughs> i had no idea uh, you know why was i working so hard uh, why would i you know get up every day morning at 5:30 and run whether it's hot or cold or you know whether it's raining or you know i i don't know but i only know one thing that i was passionate about the game i loved the game and i enjoyed what i was doing so uh, you know rallying consistently on the table was something which i found fun so in those days i never thought of it as a struggle or um, you know something like that i would say basically i was self motivated but Correct. however all that changed when i started playing at the national level after winning the sub junior national champion and when i moved on uh, to the juniors so um, initially i struggled to adjust you know because i was playing against bigger and better players and then once i won uh, the junior nationals and i moved on to the senior championship again it was the same story i had to uh, you know uh, struggle to compete against bigger and even better players so that was the thing and then after i won the senior nationals and when i started uh, consistently playing for india uh, at the international level so i think uh, the competition there was at a altogether uh, different level you know there were so many kinds of players from so many countries uh, you know some playing with a pen holder some uh, in fact uh, there were a lot of defensive players in those days and in india we you know hardly had about uh, two or three uh, defensive yes. players and uh, then you know that pen hold you know where forehand and backhand play with the same side you know so that and then uh, every player had a different technique you know their footwork their stroke play everything was different so i struggled with that too uh, but uh, overall i can say that i enjoyed the journey super and uh, ha huh, yeah Yeah, ma'am. Uh, so what, according to you, in this journey which you just explaining about, uh, who was your toughest opponent in in those times, and why? Uh, the toughest opponent uh, for me in those days, without any doubt, was Indopuri. Okay. Uh, I had played her several times, uh, but I was never able to defeat her. Though she was the most more experienced player than me. uh i was much fitter than her and uh, i was able to cover the table you know much faster and uh, but uh, you know the closest i came to beating her was i think at the western india championships at cci in mumbai uh i was two games up and uh, 2017 up oh and uh, yeah i just needed one point for victory I lost that game, twenty twenty two. Then in the fourth game, uh, I mean, there were a lot of good rallies, a lot of forehand, backhand counter, and uh, she really made me move all over the table and you know tired me. That game also I lost, you know, uh, in a very very close match. That was also something like that, twenty two twenty four. and uh, in the fifth game uh, she beat me convincingly so uh, i think she is the only indian player to have remained unbeaten till her retirement i don't think any player has beaten her uh, till she stopped playing the game and uh, she was not only a role model and an inspiration to me personally but i think she was a role model and inspiration 
to many players of our generation so uh, you know not only was she a great player but she was a wonderful human being and uh, she was mentally very very strong and uh, i think she has played some of her best table tennis under pressure and uh, you know giving all her health problems and you know other problems that she had uh, i mean she continues to amaze me till date and i think she is the table tennis uh, greatest uh, table tennis player india has ever produced in women i feel personally correct i too feel the same uh, indu prima am was there in, in of the show and uh, oh. we were thrilled to hear hear her uh, journey across mm. ma'am uh, what how you used to plan your goals in table tennis uh, that is a very good question see uh, i would always set goals i plan to accomplish and uh, i would consistently in my mind remind myself that uh, this is my goal and this is uh, what i need you know to accomplish and uh, goal setting i feel basically can be achieved only if they are your own personal goals and they are not something that is imposed by others okay. so Very you nice. basically need to enjoy what you are doing and you should be doing it for yourself not for somebody else okay. so that is what and then as i said earlier when practicing i knew exactly what strokes i needed to work on and uh, mentally too you know i would program myself to accomplish this goal and planning ahead and staying uh, relaxed was very important correct also uh, i had both short term goals and long term goals so my long term goal was of course to win the national championships so any player who plays uh, table tennis or any sport their uh, ultimate goal first will be to win uh, the national championship but to accomplish that i had a, a lot of short term goals now uh, short term goals means that uh, you know first uh, goal was to win you know the local tournaments in mumbai so mm -hmm. when i started winning those tournaments the next goal was to win at the state level you know players from pune uh, nagpur amravati satara you know try to beat them so right. once i became state champion and i accomplished that then my next goal was uh, to win at the national level that is uh, you know this western india central india india cup intact cup what we had in those days so right. that was my goal and uh, once i started winning those tournaments That that then that gave me the confidence to win the national championship. So yes, goal setting is very important. Uh, you should have specific goals, and uh, you should not give up, because uh, many times I've seen you know many talented players, uh, they too have goals, and then if they you know consistently lose in uh, two three tournaments. then they say what the hell i am losing and they quit <laughs> or they lose interest so that shouldn't happen don't give up persistent persevere and keep your focus correct results will follow that is what i feel my what was the biggest moment of your life in table tennis uh the biggest moment of my life in table tennis was of course uh, qualifying and representing india at the olympic games uh i became the first indian woman table tennis player to qualify and represent india in seoul where table tennis was introduced for the first time wow so uh yeah. at that time to just qualify 
and make it to the Olympics was a dream come true for me. So it was a, you know, fantastic experience to be one among the top 64 players in the world. But sadly, it also made me realize that how far uh, I actually was to winning an Olympic gold medal, to be very honest. Oh. You know, I mean, and uh, the other uh, uh, winning, you know, ones at the Commonwealth, then winning uh, gold medals at the SAF Games. I won the uh, singles, we won the team events, and I won the doubles in both Calcutta and uh, Islamabad, if I recall correctly. I do not recall the years, but I uh, recall the place. And uh, I think uh, it was a very proud moment for me to stand on the, uh, you know, victory stand and uh, hear uh, your uh, national anthem being played. So I think that is uh, one of the biggest moments of uh, my career. Fantastic, ma'am. Uh, what guidance you would like to give to players and parents who are currently striving hard to achieve their goals? Mm, uh, one thing I would say, it is the power of self-belief. You yes. know, uh, believe in yourself. Uh, think positive, believe positive, and strive for a positive attitude. Uh, you must always overcome yourself before you can overcome others. I would like to give you a very small uh, example. Uh, you know, the world boxing champion, Muhammad Ali, mm -hmm. he used to always proclaim before every fight, I am the greatest, I am the greatest. He not only got himself into believing that he is the greatest, but he also got his opponents into believing that he is the greatest, whereby winning half the match even before entering the boxing ring. So uh, I feel that, uh, you know, positive self-talk leads to positive performance. So never underestimate yourself. This is number one. And uh, number two, again, uh, when preparing for a tournament, uh, practice seriously. This is one thing, you know, I'm emphasizing again and again because I did, uh, you know, a stosh, one short uh, coaching stint here in Chennai uh, for about three weeks, you know. And uh, I, I saw the, you know, casual attitude of the players. They keep their phones on the table near the net. Then every three, four balls, they have to go and check, you know, their phones. So, I mean, I was uh, wondering well, what's happening, what's going on here, you know. So, I feel that, uh, you know, you really need to practice with a purpose and give every practice session your 100%. Uh, practice as if, you know, every stroke, as if a big match depended on it. Only then... Uh, you won't feel that stress when you're playing, you know, in a tournament. So, uh, your best today might not be your best tomorrow. So, always strive for perfection and improvement. This is what I feel. What a fantastic piece of advice, ma'am. Mm. Uh, uh, what is one biggest learning you had in your journey of sports, which you would like to share with all of us? Uh, my biggest learning in the journey of sports was uh, that, you know, it has made me a much better and a more uh, well-rounded person. Uh, it has taught me how to accept uh, both uh, success and failure equally as uh, part of life. And uh, it has taught me time management, discipline, and uh, it has helped me to build and improve my confidence level. And most importantly, it has exposed me to, you know, certain areas in life 
which I would have never learned sitting in a classroom. So I would say that uh, it has made me uh, both mentally and physically tough. And that has transferred into my work life to, you know, not only into my work life, but uh, even into my family life. Like, uh, I mean, as a parent, uh, you know, I have enormous influence over my children. So I still take my health very seriously. I still take my fitness very seriously. And as a kid, both my sons have been seeing that, you know, mommy works out and uh, she's very careful what she eats. There's no junk food at home. Uh, junk food is banned at home. Let me put it that way. <laughs> and uh, usually it is, you know, homemade food. So all these values, I have somehow, I don't know how, but it has transferred to them. And uh, today, of course, now they're all grown up and on their own. But uh, both my sons work out. Both of them don't eat junk food. And both of them are extremely health conscious. So yes, uh, sports has not only taught me, but I've been able to transfer that to my family, to my sons. And uh, it has helped me a lot, benefited a lot. As it is said that once a sports person, always a sports person. So you're maintaining the same in your life. Yes, true. Uh, Neeti ma'am, before we log off, what you would like to address to all sports person and sports enthusiast of India? Uh, I would like to tell one and all that uh, play some sport, either as a hobby, as a recreation activity, or you can make it your career. But, uh, you know, uh, I think playing any sport, you know, teaches you the uh, importance of hard work, perseverance. It uh, teaches you focus and uh, most importantly, discipline. Yes. So, uh, you know, which is uh, necessary in all aspects of life, not just sports. So, regular exercise can... Uh, develop a healthy mind and a body. So please make fitness a priority and uh, I would like to wish you all the very best. Thank you so much, Neti ma'am, uh, for taking out time and agree to share your life journey, which will definitely inspire and motivate many. Thank you once again, ma'am. Thank you. Dear viewers, I hope you must have enjoyed the show and also learned and inspired a lot from this episode as I am. We'll keep on bringing such inspiring episodes which will guide many sports person in their journey of sports.